Kai, Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, working under the directive of Mr. President, hereby inaugurate the Board of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. I want to also announce that the effective date of the VAT increase from 5% to 7.5% will be the 1st of February 2020. Yes, the Finance Act 2019 is up and running. VAT rate in Nigeria becomes 7.5% with effect from 1st of February 2020. And that is official. The Honorable Federal Minister of Finance was speaking at the inauguration of the new board of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, headed by Mr. Muhammad Nami, on Thursday, 16th January 2020. The story of the inauguration of the FRS board and the highlights of the Finance Act are the main course on today's episode of Tax Matters. I am Chamaka Ohauchi, and the program is Tax Matters. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, calls on all corporate organizations operating in Nigeria to register for the purpose of payment of taxes and obtain a tax identification number TIN. All registered companies must obtain a tax identification number immediately from the nearest FIRS office. You can also collect and return tax registration forms from the Federal Inland Revenue Service Engagement and Enlightenment Tax Team's feet on compliance checks exercise in your area. A company which is yet to commence business after at least six months of incorporation must pay a pre-operational levy of 20,000 Naira in the first year and 25,000 Naira for subsequent years to obtain its tax clearance certificate TCC. Note that filing and payment of VAT and withholding tax returns must be done on or before the 21st day of every month. Register for VAT. File all tax returns as and at when due. Be a responsible corporate citizen of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Welcome once again. Activities are in top gear in the taxation subsector and we want to bring you up to speed with regards to what is going on. On Monday, January 13, 2020, President Muhammad Buhari appended his signature to the Finance Bill 2019, effectively turning it into an act. A few days after, precisely on Thursday, 16 January, the Honorable Federal Minister of Finance inaugurated the new FIRS board. The newly inaugurated board is the second board of the FIRS since the return of democracy in 1999. Today is a landmark achievement because the first board of FIRS was inaugurated on the 3rd of July 2008 and today is the second one. For the executive chairman of FIRS and his board, the tax ahead is enormous. This was emphasized by the Honorable Federal Minister of Finance while addressing the board and what is expected of them. To the chairman and uh, members of the board of FRS, being a board member of such an important revenue agency comes with grave responsibilities. Indeed, under the FRS Establishment Act, the board we are here to inaugurate today is charged with various responsibilities. And this includes having overall supervision of the FRS by providing general policy guidelines, managing and superintending over the FRS policies on matters relating to the administration of the revenue assessments, collection and accounting systems for taxes under applicable statutes, reviewing and approving the FRS strategic plan, superintending over the employment, remuneration, and disciplinary measures for FRS employees in consultation with the National Salaries, Incomes, and Wages Commission, and with the approval of the Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, making rules and regulations that may be necessary or expedient for giving full effect to the provisions of the FRS Establishment Act of 2007. We are confident that under the oversight of this board, 
the FIRS will continue its transformation into a premier revenue collecting agency with a relentless commitment to enhancing good governance, probity, excellence and integrity in its operations, in its administration and in management of the nation's tax systems. The inauguration of the board of FRS could not have come at a more critical juncture. Our economy has clearly turned the corner with real GDP growth increasing from 2.1% in the first quarter of 2019 to 2.28% in the third quarter of 2019, reflecting continuous improvement in economic fundamentals and our strategy of pursuing more diversified, inclusive and sustainable growth over a medium term horizon. As expected, the implementation of the Finance Act formed a major part of Mrs. Zina Bamet's charge to the new board. As you are aware, Mr. President has assented to the Finance Act 2019 on the 13th of January 2020. The Finance Act is to achieve incremental but necessary changes to our physical laws, principally by one, promoting physical equity by mitigating instances of regressive taxation, two, re reforming domestic tax laws to align with global best practices, Three, introducing tax incentives for investments in infrastructure as well as our capital markets. Four, supporting micro, small, and medium-sized businesses in line with our ease of doing business reforms. And five, raising revenues for government, particularly through the increase of the VAT rate from 5% to 7.5%. Our tax laws are also getting simpler. Simpler in terms of having lower rates of taxes, particularly for micro, small, and medium-sized taxpayers. Our taxes are becoming more modern and strategic in approach. Indeed, the Finance Act 2019 exempts micro enterprises from corporate taxation and reduces the corporate tax rate for small and medium-sized businesses from 30% to 20%. The Honorable Federal Minister of Finance also linked the mandate of the new board to the strategic revenue growth initiatives put in place by the Ministry. The Finance Act 2019 is a landmark achievement. Under the SRGI, it represents the first fundamental reforms of the Nigerian tax laws for a decade. And we must thank the National Assembly for making this a reality. This act enacts key reforms to various tax laws in line with the national tax policy. And increasingly, we are transi uh, transitioning into a tax system that is fairer, simpler, more modern, and strategic in its approach. One of the key provisions in the Finance Act 2019 that has elicited a lot of interest is the increase in the VAT from 5% to 7.5%. And to remind us all that the finance bill has made copious provisions to improve the ease of doing business. So we have a category of companies that have turnover of 25% and below that will be paying no taxes at all, so zero taxes. And also we have reduced tax rates for companies that have turnover from 25 million to 100 million, from 30% to 20%. The essence of this is to encourage formalization of businesses from the informal sector, and also to encourage businesses to grow and become more productive, thereby increasing employment and also meeting the commitment of, pres uh, of Mr. President to remove 100 million Nigerians out of poverty over the next 10 years. So the FRS board has a major task to contribute to this. I want to also announce that the effective date of the VAT increase from 5% to 7.5% will be the 1st of February, 2020. On the taxpayer identification number system, the SRGI also targets optimizing technology as a tool to enhance revenue outcomes. 
We expect the accelerated execution of key automation projects by the FRS, such as the Harmonized Tax Registry, which I understand is referred to as UTIN, whilst the enhanced collaboration with Joint Tax Board and State Boards of Inland Revenue has resulted in growth of registered taxpayers in Nigeria from 10 million in 2015 to 20 million in 2018, we expect the UTIN project, once fully operational, to increase the tax bayer base from this 20 million to 45 million over the medium time horizon. Our priority technology driven programs include the deployment of e services, ITAX, interagency data exchange, as well as VAT automation by FRS. And this is to enable the charging of VAT on online purchases via auto deductions by banks who will be acting who have been acting as agents to the FRS the minister met this promise we are committed to proposing a finance bill for 2020 to accompany the 2021 budget in our efforts to reform the Nigerian tax laws in line with national tax policies and then the high point of the event the inauguration of the new FRS board. I, Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, working under the directive of Mr. President, hereby inaugurate the board of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. In his remarks after the inauguration, the executive chairman FRS responded this way. As tax administrators and custodians of the Nigerian tax system, we have a responsibility to the nation to implement all tax policies and laws in a manner that will ensure optimal benefit to the nation. We should therefore be committed to providing excellent service to the people of Nigeria. Our sense of responsibility should draw from the fact that the various tiers of government, federal, state, and local, as well as, the AMSO, uh, as well as the AMSO government, executive, legislature, and judiciary, all rely on us to provide adequate funds for their activities and develop, developmental projects, especially in the face of dwindling and uncertain revenues from the oil sector. We cannot, therefore, afford, afford to fail them. Great privilege affords us another chance to serve our fatherland with due diligence and unflinching patriotism. As such, we must dedicate ourselves to the tax at hand. For as a people of integrity and proven knowledge in tax matters, the nation looks up to us to provide it with a leeway out of the present economic crunch. We must ha have faith in our country and in our ability to discharge the tax of generating adequate revenue to meet developmental needs of this country. I therefore call on Nigerians to support us and to constructively engage us as we strive towards delivering on our mandate. Indeed, leadership is all about shared vision and responsibility. Let me assure you that I intend to build on achievement of my predecessors in office while building a tax administration that would not only deliver on its mandate, but also that will we shall all be proud of. Mr. Nami also seized the occasion to represent his three-month roadmap. Our efforts to reposition the service for better service to our esteemed taxpayers will be, will be anchored on four cardinal pillars. One, rebuilding FRS to SNAP framework. Two, robust collaboration with stakeholders Three, building a customer taxpayer-centric institution. Four, data-centric institution. Portion to the board, I, I intend to optimize the following during the first 100 days in office. One, building capacity of staff for effective service delivery. Closing on all lien cases in order to build new enforcement strategies. Restructuring and repositioning of audit function. Review of structures for optimal performance has already commenced and will be unveiled at FRS Corporate uh, Strategy Retreat that will be holding in February. 
Corporate strategic retreat to define roles and targeting setting. Six, capacity building on finance bill and, and other tax programs. Seven, review of tax, TCC, tax clearance certificate administration processes, which started in January this year. Revamping of integrated tax administration system ITAS, reposition of large tax and medium tax offices, determination of collection of focus, key performance indicators, and other key service parameters. Reposition of collections, reporting, and accounting. Overhauling of critical ICT infrastructure, which are cost effective for efficient service delivery. Mr. Nami sought the cooperation of all and sundry. At this point, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to solicit the cooperation and support of all stake stakeholders, especially the manager and staff of FRS, in the task of rebuilding and repositioning FRS for optimal, optimal performance. In this way, the management and staff of the service must renew their commitment and devotion to this so that together we shall succeed. The Chairman Senate Committee on Finance, Senator Adeola Olamilekon, graced the occasion with his colleagues in both houses and pledged the full support of both houses to the new FRS board. Let me assure you that we in the National Assembly are solidly behind you. We will be working with you closely and also doing everything to improve the revenue generation drive of the government vis-a-vis -vis the Ministry of Finance and the Federal Inland Revenue Service by putting together a nimbly legislation that will assist in this direction. And I want to equally assure you that we'll be there to carry out our oversight function, but majorly to ensure the success of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Once more, on behalf of the entire the Senate President, the Speaker, and the two chairmen of the Senate Committee on Finance and its members, I want to congratulate you and wish you the best of luck in office. Tax Matters spoke to some of the board members. As a member of the board, what support are you going to give to the executive chairman to ensure that his mandate is being achieved? Every support he needs. I think the role of the board is one that is a very strategic role. So we will be supporting him with corporate governance. We would also be supporting and reviewing um, all his strategic plans for the year as his mandate has been to grow the revenue base. So we will encourage him, um, we will review his plans. Um, we would also provide direction you know, in areas and instances where the plans are not in alignment with the goals of Mr. President. Looking at the Finance Act, how do you think this is going to be effective in your operation and your work? First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that worked on the Finance Act. It's going to change the landscape of how we do things in Nigeria because we're going to be able to respond faster to changes, particularly as it relates to digital economy and the evolving world of technology. So I think bringing up a Finance Act at this time um, would encourage and boost a lot of investments, particularly one in our private, um, in our capital markets, because there are a lot of incentives in capital markets now. So we want to see the capital markets grow a bit. Also, we want to see formalization of our enterprises and of our industries. With the exemption of businesses with less than 25 million, what they would then have is that we have more, more people being unable to pay in taxes because they can all then come into the, you know, into the tax net and we can formalize our tax structure. So I'm very happy um, with, the, with the start of the VAT as well. Um, which, which, which the minister, the Honourable Minister, just announced that it's commencing on 1st of February. I do hope that revenue starts to come in so that we can finance some of the projects that are currently in our 2020 budget. Thank you. Sir, as a member of the board of the FRS, what support are you bringing in? Are you giving to the executive chairman? We are here to ensure that there's um, policy guidelines and that uh, we adhere to the policy. We're also to interpret the intentions of the government and see that that's how that is carried out with respect to revenue collection. Uh, we're to render help and support to the chairman uh, to ensure that we attain optimal revenue collection. Um, if you're talking about me personally, uh, I'm an accountant by training. I'm a chartered accountant and I have worked in revenue. I was a special advisor to the governor of Ogun State on revenue matters. 
and that was when we increased revenue from 600 million a month to 6 billion a month. So there are ways that we did it, and I'm sure that uh, that experience, together with the experience of my colleagues, will be able to reinforce even the experience of the chairman to help to improve upon the revenue collections at Haifa IRS. And at a press briefing with pressmen, the executive chairman, FRS, laid out the plans of his administration. To support uh, Nigerians, particularly the state government, with funds that would always be paying minimum wage and taking care of the welfare of public uh, sector workers in Nigeria. The second uh, issue is to ensure that the current tax GTB ratio, which is just about 5%, by the end of this year, we're able to raise that to as much as slightly above 10%. So from there, we can move forward the next year. In a chat with the Honorable Federal Minister of Finance, she made these clarifications. Okay, Honorable Minister Ma, the finance bill which has been signed into law, which is now a finance act, is it to be cited as Finance Bill 2019 or Finance Bill 2020? Finance Act 2019. Finance Act is now a law, so we call it an act, it's 2019. Ma, you mentioned that the, the kick-off date for the provisions in the Finance Act will be 1st February 2019. There are a lot of different provisions in the, in the bill. But what I said is that the VAT increase takes effect from 1st of February 2020. There are other provisions such as the adjustment to tax rates. Those will take effect from 1st of January 2019. Why? Because taxes are paid based on previous year assessments. So the assessment will only be only at the end of the year based on accounts for 2020. Later in the evening, the new board members were welcomed with a reception dinner. provide goods and services, then you must answer these important questions. Are you registered for VAT? Do you charge VAT on the goods and services you provide? Do you keep records of all your transactions? Do you file VAT returns? Do you remit VAT collected to government coffers? If your answer to any of these questions is no, then you are breaking the law. The law demands total compliance. Therefore, you must register for VAT. You must charge VAT on goods and services. You must file VAT returns. And you must remit all VAT collected on behalf of government within 21 days to the bank nearest to you. To do otherwise is a crime punishable everywhere in the world. VAT is prescribed by the law. Do the right thing. Collect and pay VAT. This message is from the FIRS. It pays to pay your... From all of us at Tax Matters, we send the assurances of our fullest cooperation to the new board members and more especially to the executive chairman. The tax ahead is enormous and we have faith that you are all equal to the tax. And to your viewers, thank you for watching.